Please be seated. Good morning and a warm welcome to our worship here this morning in Baysford and a warm welcome to anybody watching this later on today or this week at home or listening on our phone service. Today is the day in the church calendar that is the final year of the liturgical year and is called the Sunday of Christ the King. And we're thinking about a king who chose to be a shepherd. Make a joyful noise to the Lord. Well, but behind your mask and in measured tones. Worship God with gladness. Come into God's presence, it says in the psalm, with singing, but you're not allowed. We are God's people, the sheep of God's pasture. Give thanks to the Lord. Bless God's holy name. For God's steadfast love is present now and endures forever. We worship God as we listen to the words of a well-known hymn that is all about a shepherd. The Lord's my shepherd. The Lord's my shepherd. I'll not want. He makes me down to lie. In pastures green, he leadeth me the quiet waters by. My soul he doth restore again. And me to walk doth make within the paths of righteousness, even for his own name's sake. Yea, though I walk in death's dark veil, yet will I fear none ill. For thou art with me, and thy rod and staff me comfort still. My table thou hast furnished in presence of my foes. My head thou dost with oil anoint. And my cup overflows. Goodness and mercy all my life shall surely follow me. And in God's house forevermore my dwelling place. Let us pray. Tender, comforting shepherd, your steadfast love is present wherever we are because it resides within each one of us. But sometimes it's hard, so hard, to open ourselves up to your love. We feel like the scattered sheep, frightened and alone. Help us to know your loving presence as we live as your gathered and scattered community. Enlighten our hearts that we may know the hope to which we have been called. Holy One, we are like sheep that stray from your fold. We are always hungry, always in spiritual need, and at times in physical want. 
We are the naked with wounds, exposed and bleeding. We are the sick, fevered and chilled and in pain. We are the strangers, separated from others and even from ourselves. Lord, we confess our brokenness and our need. Lord, heal us, help us, comfort us and support us and hear us as we join together using Jesus' own words. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. You would normally expect me to use a reading in a service about Christ the King from the New Testament, but I've chosen to go to the book of the prophet Ezekiel in the Old Testament and read in chapter 34, starting at verse 11. Listen for God's word. This is what the Lord says. I myself will search for my sheep and take care of them. As a shepherd takes care of his scattered flock when, it's, when it is found, I will take care of my sheep. I will save them from all the places where they were scattered on a cloudy and dark day. I will bring them out from the nations and gather them from the countries. I will bring them on the mountains, sorry, I will bring them to their own land and pasture them on the mountains of Israel, in the ravines and in all the places where people live in the land. I will feed them in a good pasture and they will eat grass on the high mountains of Israel. They will lie down on good ground where they eat grass, and they will eat in rich grassland on the mountains of Israel. I will feed my flock and lead them to rest, says the Lord God. I will search for the lost, bring back those that strayed away, put bandages on those that were hurt, and make the weak strong. I will destroy those sheep that are fat and strong. I will tend the sheep with fairness. Thanks be to God for this sharing of his holy and life-giving word, and to him be all praise and glory. It really gets the, the story of the shepherd and the, the lost sheep into context when we see that Jesus is simply quoting from what he learnt as a child from the words of Ezekiel. Here we have a hymn that is not in our hymn books. It's one that I probably only met last week for the first time. I would be surprised if anybody else has heard it. It's called Like Sheep We Went Astray. Like sheep we went astray and broke the fold of God each wandering in a different way but all the downward road how dreadful was the hour when God our wanderings laid and did at once his vengeance pour upon the shepherd's head how glorious was the grace when Christ sustained the stroke, his life and blood the shepherd pays, a ransom for the flock. His honour and his breath were taken quite away. 
joined with the wicked in his death, and me as vile as they. But God shall raise his head o'er all the sons of men, and make him see a numerous seed to recompense his pain. I'll give him, saith the Lord, a portion with the strong. He shall possess a large reward and hold his honours long. Today, as I say, is a special day when we remember all the things that Jesus taught us and we look forward to the time when Jesus will come back to us again. One of the greatest lessons that he taught was about what we should do to help others. He told them a story about a king who thanked all his people for the good things that they'd done for him. He said that he was hungry and the good people gave him some food to eat. He was very thirsty and didn't have good water to drink. And the king thanked them for making sure that he had some good water. He said that there was a time when his clothing was all ragged and torn, and the king thanked them for the nice clothes that protected him from the weather. He surprised them when he said that he'd been sick and even in prison, and he thanked them for their visits. It really made him feel much better. Finally, he said that at one time he was a stranger, and that they made him feel very welcome. Well, the king's friends were really very surprised and asked the king when they'd done all these things for him. And he looked straight at them and he said, if you've done these things for anyone, then you've done them for me. He reminded them that this was the mark of a disciple, a follower of Jesus, and that if they wanted to live the love that God had showered on them, then these were the sorts of things that they were supposed to do. But to the ones who said they hadn't done anything like that, he said that he was ashamed of them and that they weren't true followers of him. You see, God wants us to reach out to others with kind words, kind thoughts, and kind actions. These things Jesus taught us, being a follower and friend of Jesus is a fantastic privilege and a wonderful opportunity to help other people in need. Now I know that you are all doing your very best to be followers and friends of Jesus because I know that you bought, brought along food for the food bank that you welcomed other people when they come to our church, that I'm sure you've offered a drink of water to somebody who needed it, but you certainly have been involved in bringing shoeboxes that we could send to people who otherwise wouldn't have anything at all to open on Christmas Day. And I don't know that you all do what you can for your families, your friends and neighbours, whether it's just a phone call every so often, or going and seeing if you can get something for them when you're heading down to the shops, or whatever. You are well on your way to becoming very special disciples of Jesus. And I thank God for each and every one of you, for what you do, for somebody who is not our typical king. We're now going to hear some words to a tune that we used a couple of weeks ago. But this time it's called Jesus is Our Shepherd to Eau Claire de la Lune. Jesus is our shepherd. On his faithful breast, safe from every danger, we, his flock, may rest by the cooling streamlet in the valley fair. He will gently lead us by his tender care. 
Jesus is our shepherd in the dewy mead and the verdant meadow he his flock will feed. He will ne'er desert us to the tempter's power. He will kindly cheer us in the darkest hour. Jesus is our shepherd, he the living way. From his fold of mercy may we never stray. When our hearts are wayward, when our steps would rove, bind us, gentle shepherd, with thy chain of love. The picture, in case you can't see it very well, is of a pasture, a stony pasture, and on it are a mixture of sheep and goats. Imagine that you've all heard the phrase, ignorance of the law is no excuse. It is a legal principle holding that a person who's unaware of a law may not escape liability for disobeying that law merely because he or she was unaware of its content. The Gospel tells us that at the end of each person's life, and then at the end of all human lives, when Jesus returns, there is judgment, a separation into sheep and goats. The goats become snacks for Satan, while the sheep are themselves served at the eternal banquet of heaven. Oh, you might say, that's just not fair. After all, I've heard in many sermons that sheep and goats are amongst the stupidest of animals. It's not fair to roast some and toast the others, is it? Maybe so, if we were actually discussing farm animals. But we're not. Ezekiel and Jesus and other prophets use the analogy of sheep and goats and shepherds and goat herds to show in earthly terms the depths of the crazy love that God has for us. Compared to Jesus, we really are like headless chickens in our understanding, our devotion and our ability to take direction. But we're human beings made in the image and likeness of God. We've all heard that the two rules of life that we must follow are to love God above all things and love our neighbour, all of our neighbours, even our enemies, as we love ourselves. An ignorance of those two simple laws is no excuse. Even people who don't profess to be Christians have heard it. The promise is simply awesome, if you're a sheep. At the day of judgment, the sheep, the good people, the people whose lives demonstrated that they have listened to Jesus' message, will be rewarded with a place in one of heaven's many mansions. What about the goats, you ask? How can an all-loving God send them to eternal damnation? Hell is described as the state of definitive self-exclusion from communion with God and the blessed. Self-exclusion from communion with God and the blessed. And that's also its greatest torment, its most horrible punishment. What about the fire and brimstone and devils poking us with pitchforks and all the rest? They will be awful, but not as awful as the awful feeling of having messed up, of having every joy, especially the vision of God, freely available and simply turning away from it. God doesn't send anyone to hell. No. Anyone ends up out of union with God with God has excluded himself 
for herself. All on the very own. Some have spent their lives habitually seeking power over others. And I don't just mean corrupt politicians and judges. You can attain power over another just by knowing secrets that they wouldn't like others to find out about. Some of the goats are addicts to simply being bad neighbours. They'll refuse to change their ways even at the expense of everlasting punishment. Now you know that in the Ten Commandments there are three commandments about loving God but seven about loving our fellow human beings. Is that because it's harder to do or because God thinks it's more important? The beauty of the divine plan is that God wants each and every one of us to be in union with him forever. That was the plan right from the beginning. When Adam and Eve messed up and told God, no, nah, he continued to say yes. And he continues to say yes to us. So much so that God the Father sent his only son, Jesus Christ, to die for us and to win the possibility through faith and service of eternal union and resurrection. So our challenge, our requirement, is that we should tell that story to everyone that we know, that we should encourage each other to pay the small cost needed to stay with the king who chose to be a shepherd so that we may be in his flock forever. The Lord's My Shepherd is probably one of the most famous hymns. And recently, well, not that recent, I think it was nearly 30 years ago, Stuart Townend set the words to it to a somewhat different tune. Let's hear that just now. shepherd I'll not want. He makes me lie in pastures green. He leads me by the still, still waters. His goodness restores my soul. And I will trust in you alone. And I will trust in you alone for your endless mercy follows me. Your goodness will lead me home. He guides my way in righteousness and he anoints my head with oil and my cup, it overflows with joy. I feast on his pure delights and I will trust in you alone. And I will trust in you alone, for your endless mercy follows me. Your goodness will lead me home. And though I walk the darkest path, I will not fear the evil one, for you are with me, and your rod and staff are the comforts I need to know. And I will trust in you alone. And I will trust in you alone. For your endless mercy follows me. Your goodness will lead me home.
Here is the church news. If you didn't get your November newsletter and 2021 WFO envelopes, please speak to your elder or phone them if they're not here, if you haven't got one yet. Next Sunday, we celebrate the beginning of Advent, the start of a new church year, and we do so by sharing in bread and wine. Well, bread and grape juice. And so that is formal intimation that we will be celebrating the sacrament of Holy Communion in our service next Sunday morning. We will do it in pretty much the same way as we did for our September Communion, in that the elements will be at your seats on your arrival or delivered fairly soon thereafter. And they will only be touched by a sanitised and gloved hand. In order to keep the church safe for everyone, in future, when you come in, there is a tub containing wet wipes, sanitising wet wipes. Would you please take one of those with you when you come into church, and before you leave, wipe down the area in front of you that you may have touched, and the seat that you've been sitting on, and then take the wet wipe and put it in a bin as you leave. That will save the duty team from doing what is required in keeping the church safe for everyone to use through the week and the following Sunday. Please continue to support the food bank. I uh, just about tripped over when I went into the vestry because there's a lot of bags there. It shows that our generosity has not been um, hampered by the uh, coronavirus, but it also means that we realise that the work of the food bank is really every bit as important, if not more so, to folk in our community. And these are, as far as I'm aware, all the notices to share with you. Let us come to God in prayer. Amazing God, you allowed us the privilege that during this year to walk the pathways of hope with Jesus. It's been a year, hasn't it, Lord, when we really need to live with that hope. Hope that this virus can be contained. Hope that we don't catch it. Hope that None of our friends or neighbours or family members may catch it. Hope that those who do get infected are not infected even unto death. From your incarnation in Christ at the Nativity to his acceptance of the ministries to, to which you called him, from the magnificent lessons about caring and compassion as he trod the roads leading in a winding path from Nazareth to Jerusalem, from the encounters with hostile people to the cries of those in need and to his crucifixion and resurrection, we have been blessed to learn from our Saviour and have our lives transformed by his redeeming love. Bring the joy of this day, this day when we celebrate Christ as our King who chose to be a shepherd into our hearts. Flood our lives with your words of hope that our ministries may glow with delight at serving you as we serve others. Bless this church as we continue to learn what you would have us do. Let us be a haven of peace and hope in this world that is bound in so much anger and fear. Bless the whole Church of Scotland, the whole Church of Christ. And at this time, this time of danger and fear, this time of warfare and argument, this time of political discord, that we, 
as the Church of Christ should be agents of peace, agents of reconciliation, agents of love for our neighbours. May we share in the task that our King has given us to be shepherds, to lead the sheep beside the clear waters to find places, havens of peace. Amen. Let's sing quietly the words of our offering hymn. Shepherd, Holy One, you've given us all that we have and all that we are. Through our gifts of money in and our lives of service, help us to be shepherds and healers and good neighbours that you are calling us to be. Be with us and cause each and every one of us to grow in our faith and service. Amen. Come, you who are blessed, inherit all that is prepared for you. We leave this sacred space to claim the riches and glorious inheritance that are ours through Christ. Go out into the world to share your blessings with all in need, today, tomorrow, and forever. <laughs> 